like every candidate to ministry in the United Church of Canada. Before I was ordained, uh, I went to uh, an interview uh, before, in front of a panel of lay and ordered people. And I was asked a series of questions like, uh, who is God for me? Or what is my embedded theology, for example? These were difficult but fair question uh, if we consider that I spent the equivalent of four years in a theological college. The goal is to verify what I have learned, but there's something that I think that was missing because academic knowledge does not tell all. Uh, Maybe you have experienced this. Uh, someone can be very uh, book smart, if we can use that expression, but it does not necessarily mean they will be a good minister. It surely helps. Don't get me wrong. But sometimes uh, there's, there's something more needed than to provide a good analysis of Bonhoeffer, for example. Um, and this... It's, it's, it's a series of questions that, that can be asked to minister or to lay people that could be summarized by uh, why do we believe in God? Why are we Christian after all? Uh, why do we go to church uh, every Sunday morning or so? And it's not always easy to answer because uh, it forces us to look in our size in herself, sorry, and wonder, is it tradition, is it habit, is it curiosity? Um, and often the, the answer is, it's something that we cannot name, we cannot fully put our finger on it. In, in the Gospel according to John, uh, in the beginning, in chapter 1, actually, uh, John the Baptist is still very popular. And one day you see Jesus passing through, he said, here's the Lamb of God. And two of John's disciples decide to follow Jesus. And after a while, we don't know how long, <laughs> Jesus turned and said, what are you looking for? What do you want? And surprisingly, the disciples did not answer, well, we want to know if you're really the Lamb of God or... We want to know if you're the Messiah we're waiting for. No. They just answer, we want to know where you live. <laughs> Might be strange, but from what we understand, those two disciples did not want knowledge, did not want a great statement. They want to experience uh, what it is to be at Jesus' side. So Jesus said, come and see. And, and later... Uh, the text tells us the next day, Andrew, go back to his brother Peter. And he said, we have found the Messiah. And he did not tell his brother that he said this, he did this miracle. These are the signs that we see and that will convince you uh, to believe and to follow him. You know, and Andrew did not prepare an argument to make him believe. He just share an emotion, a nudge, uh, a gut feeling. And like the expression says, the rest is history. Makes me think that maybe in the last few centuries, um, Christianity have put a lot of emphasis on the intellectual side of our faith, uh, on systematic theology, on reason, on knowledge. And we use that to define our faith. Maybe what we have missed in this or not give enough importance is the experience. How can we experience God, the divine, the sacred in our lives? Of course, it's difficult to put words on it. But the great thing about it is when it happens, when we have those experiences, there's a feeling that we don't need 
where is her explanation? We got it. We got it. We know that something special is happening. And it's maybe a reminder in this text from the Gospel of John that, yes, there's knowledge, reason, yes, great. And yes, there's also the experience of the risen Christ, the experience of God. Once again, thank you for watching. I appreciate your presence week after week. And until next time, I remain the lectionary man, Reverend Stefan Vermette. Take care of yourself and bye-bye.